Hey friends, welcome to the channel. If you would like to catch fish on lures and rods that you design and create, stick around. We're going to paint some cranks, build some lures, and maybe take them fishing. This video is the first in a series of getting started painting crankbaits and some of the favorite patterns that I want to share with you. So this is the first in a series on getting started painting crankbaits and I want to share with you some of my favorite patterns. <clears throat> We're going to start today with just a basic uh, shad pattern and I want to talk about just a few things that we're going to need to start with. Obviously, if we're going to spray with an airbrush, we need an airbrush. And we need something to hold the airbrush in and blow the airbrush off in. Some masking tape. Alligator clamps and something to hold our baits with. Um, a lot, a lot of people like these helping hands, and they are very helpful in the right conditions, I think. Um, we also want to make sure that we have a respirator when we're spraying. Very important not to breathe this stuff any more than we have to. Okay, so let's get started. Our first step I've already done, and that is to use masking tape and tape off your lure bill if your lure has a bill and if you don't want to paint it, mask it off. <clears throat> our second step, or maybe our first step actually, would be to, to examine our bait for any kind of a deformity or maybe imperfection in the actual bait itself a lot of times you'll find like in this bait here um, and I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up but where this seam comes together there, it's, there's a ridge here and <clears throat> that's going to show in your final product so you would probably want to take a piece of sandpaper and kind of sand that down just like some 400 grit or something and get that smoothed out. Also, <clears throat> check your, your hook hangers on these baits. And again, I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, but if you look at this, this hook hanger is in this bait crooked, which is not good. Um, so I don't know, you could try to straighten that or do something with it, but not a good situation there. Watch for stuff like that. Sometimes on these cheaper baits, you'll see um, that even these hook hangers aren't sealed completely and looks like you could get water in them. And if that's the case, you might need to do a little repair there before you start to paint. <clears throat> this bait also has a little bugger up here in the hook eye and I would probably try to take my exacto knife or something and get that cleaned up before I ever start to paint and I have another bait here I wanted to show you yeah this bait here you might be able to see this a little better um, this has some kind of a some kind of a big flaw right here like a big gob uh, something stuck to it or something so again you'd want to scrape that off and get that sanded down get that smoothed up just inspect your baits really well um, this in here also isn't as bad but I can catch my fingernail on this bottom seam and if I was going to prepare this bait to paint I would definitely want to sand that down which brings me to another point that I want to make this blank here comes from dingerbaits.com and these baits when I get them from dingers um, they're wonderful 
there, you can't catch your fingernail here. These hook eyes are always perfect. I've never had one of these baits that had any issues at all. And I really like to paint baits from Dinger. And especially this one, this is a Dinger D7. And I like to paint this bait and I love to fish this bait. Absolutely a fish catching fool right here. Another thing I'd point out about some of these other baits and I honestly don't know where these two baits came from I believe they were given to me by somebody that wanted me to paint them and I honestly said no I I don't want to paint that quality of stuff but there's really probably nothing wrong with it they probably catch fish I, I would admit that I just don't want to waste my time on them another thing I've noticed about these though is a lot of times they're sticky they, and I don't know what it is if it's a wax or a release agent or something on here and if that's the case then you would want to make sure and get some like rubbing alcohol isopropyl alcohol and clean these up before you start painting so anyway I just wanted to point that out real quick and the next thing I want to do is I just want to get started and put a white base coat on this blank here we're going to turn this into just a simple shad pattern <clears throat> again this is crankbait 101 so please excuse me i don't i don't mean to talk down to anybody just a nice simple good complete white coat and then our second step after we get that done is we're going to use a heat gun or a heat dryer or a hair dryer and we're going to heat set this paint. And I am using a heat gun today because I find it slightly less irritating in the camera. <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to do is get a little bit of pearl white paint on here. And I'll just blow a little of this paint white out of the brush. And add a little pearl white. Just a couple drops is all we'll need. Always test your gun on a, or your brush on a clean piece of paper. And then we want to go ahead and paint over the top of this with the pearl white. Now this time I'm not going to heat set after this coat of paint. And the reason is I'm going to come back with a <clears throat> wicked color, wicked gold. And I want the two colors to flow together and blend together. So I'm going to go ahead and spray the next coat on top of a wet coat of paint <clears throat> without heat setting. If I didn't want the two to blend any more than necessary, then I would heat set. What I want to do with this is spray the back pretty well. So come down the sides about halfway.
rinse my airbrush out a little bit. And again, I'm going to use another Createx color of pearlized copper. I kind of like the Createx paints. Um, I think I got started using them mainly because they were easy, easy for me to find locally. In places like Michael's and Hobby Lobby. Um, I also really like Tester's paint. And again, I'm just going to come right over the top and just lightly cover like that. And get rid of any excess paint. Going to add a little bit of transparent dark brown now. Turn my pressure down a little. I normally don't pay much attention to what my pressure gauge says. I pay attention to how the paint is coming out of my airbrush. I'm just going to kind of spray right down the back, maybe tip the bait just a little bit to let a little bit of that overspray come down the sides. Looking for a result very similar to that. And now I will heat set this. And I'm going to rinse my airbrush out pretty good this time. I'm going to come back with black so it doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but <clears throat> get it cleaned out. Run a little bit of airbrush cleaner through it. And then I'll add just a little bit of opaque black. Just again, just a couple drops should be plenty. I'm going to turn my pressure down some more. I'm not going to want much paint this time. There we go. And all I really want to do, maybe just real faint, just right down the back. And then I'll get the nose. And come back and get the eye sockets. Like that. I'm going to heat set it again. And the one last final detail.
I made this very sophisticated stencil. I took a hole punch and I punched a hole in a piece of paper. And that's going to be the stencil for our shad dot. And I'm going to line it up right behind the gill plate. And I'm just going to spray that little circle. When you use stencils, really just paint the outside of your stencil more than you paint the inside of your circle. And there's our shad dot. We'll turn it over and do the other side. And there's our other shed dot. So we'll heat set this again. And that is our very simple little shad pattern. Just Nice and simple, fairly easy, something to practice. Um, again, this is painting 101, so first lesson. Um, <clears throat> only thing left is to put some eyes on it, give it a clear coat, hooks and rings, and go catch a fish. So we're back. Let's give this Shad some gold eyes. We'll get them pushed down in that eye socket really well. And I know a lot of people like to put a drop of super glue to hold their eyes in place so they don't fall out when they dip them in their clear coat. But I find super glue is kind of a pain to work with. And sometimes I end up getting it on the outside of my bait. And honestly, I've never had very many eyes come out of the eye socket. And sometimes when they do, they stick on the side and they just look interesting. So okay, we have eyes, so Let's dump it, give it a little dunk in our KBS clear coat. Put a drip wire back here. And I always put my drip wires on before I dip. It, mainly just because it seems a lot easier to me. But I do kind of crimp them on so they can't come off because you don't want them to come off in your clear coat. That is not fun. You will put a hang wire on the other end. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bend that over so it can't come off but yet it can still swing free. Might put just a little bend in it. So well, it clears the lip real well. Okay, I'm going to back this camera out and we'll, we'll clear coat it.
and I just dip them in nice and slow make sure they're fully submerged bill and all nice and slow I just pull them back out I think the slower you go, the less chance of air bubbles you might have. We'll let it drip there a little bit. And we'll just hang it over here in front of the fan. And we'll just let it set there till tomorrow. And we probably will give it a second coat tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Happy fishing.